My husband's ex-GF is dying. Her last wish is to be with my husband. My husband's ex-GF is dying. Her last wish is to be with my husband, as the title goes. My 30F husband's ex-girlfriend, 33F, was recently diagnosed with late-stage breast cancer, and her last wish is to be with my husband, 35 men. My husband, let's call him Seb, and his ex Tanya became best friends after their breakup a couple of years ago due to her infidelity. They were together for five years. Needless to say, they remain in contact even before he met me. I would be lying. If I say, it never made me feel uncomfortable even once it did and it still does, because Tanya is still in love with my husband, she never denied it, and in fact, would even call or message me when she can't get a hold of SE, aside from cancer. She also has some mental health issues, thus my husband would always tell me to be kind and patient. Seb is no longer in love with her, of course she cheated, and Seb swore that he will never get back to her, and that he only see her as family. Two weeks ago, my husband received a call from Tanya to tell him about the sad news my husband cried with her and told her everything is going to be okay. They were on the phone the whole day. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that Seb and I moved to Australia a few months ago because of my job and Tanya is in Canada. They mostly talk via long-distance call or WhatsApp. They've been in contact almost every day since we left, which always bothers me, but what can I do after that call? My husband told me everything, to be honest. I felt bad for her, and I genuinely feel sad. I asked him what's going to happen now. Seb told me he's going back to Canada, which is a shock. He then told me that her last wish is to be with him. I didn't say anything except what about me. He said, if I can't leave my job, then he's going to visit me whenever he gets the chance. I walked out without saying anything. I've been avoiding my husband since the phone call, and have been ignoring him whenever he tries to bring up the conversation yesterday. I found out he already bought a ticket, and is flying back home in January. I feel like he's abandoning me, but at the same time, I feel that I'm selfish for hating both of them. I'm honestly thinking of getting a divorce because obviously he's choosing her over me, but at the same time I thought of why my husband is so attached to her. Seb considered Tanya and her family like his own, as he doesn't have one. She's probably like a sister to him now, but Tanya doesn't feel the same. She's madly in love with my husband, and him granting her wish will surely make her think they still have a chance. My, my entire life, I've been putting others, telling me that Tanya needs him more in March. I was expecting him to come back so we could talk, but he didn't come back. He said he needs to stay longer and promised me he will be back in May. I don't know what happened to me when I got that call from him early March to tell me he won't be flying back to Australia. At the time, I felt like there's a switch that suddenly turned off because somehow I stopped caring when he told me he won't be back until May. I knew I had to move forward without him. Fast forward to May he was back that day. We sat down to talk. He broke down and said, I can't lose you too. When he said that, I thought Tanya was gone. But no, she's not. And as far as I know, she's still alive to this day. I asked what happened. And he told me that Tanya asked him to go back and be with me. He said that Tanya is sorry for everything. Seb didn't want to leave her, especially when he saw how bad she was doing. They had a fight, and according to him, Tanya wants him out of her life. If I was the same dumb person, I would totally accept him back. But at that time, all I could think was, he's only back because Tanya doesn't want him anymore. I let him cry, I comforted him and let him stay in my apartment a week after I told him I'm divorcing him. At first he refused to leave. It was a long and painful process. But on my birthday in July, he finally realized that he couldn't manipulate me anymore. By August, he was back in Canada. Divorce is not finalized yet, but we have been separated since he left. He tried to contact me several times last year. Tanya also tried to contact me, everyone including my family. Tried to convince me to give him a second chance, but that day in March, when I finally came back to my senses, I knew nothing can make me change my mind. As of now, I'm doing fine alone by myself. I got promoted last year and moved to a bigger apartment near the beach. I found new friends and recently getting into Pilates. I've traveled Australia and New Zealand and met some amazing people. I feel like a completely different person last year was the major turning point of my life. Seb still bothers me from time to time, but he knows I couldn't care less anymore. Sometimes I talk to him, I still care, but not as much. I've been told by our common friends that he's not doing well. He became an alcoholic and couldn't get a good job because of it. He's mostly couch surfing because Tanya doesn't want him to live with her LOL that. For those people who are in the same situation as me,
please know that everything is going to be better. I thought I can't get through this. There are times I thought of taking my own life. It was hard, but I promise you, it would be better. You'd be surprised how strong you are and how amazing life can be.